Hey guys, Morgan's Maintenance. Today's tour review is going to be for a brand new Milwaukee M12 fuel tool. It is their new M12 fuel jigsaw, uh, part number 2545-20. I just got this a couple days ago. Haven't really put it through its paces yet, but I'm going to go over its features and talk about things that I like about it. And one thing in particular that I don't like about it in comparison to the old style uh, M12 jigsaw. I've actually surprised it took them this long to come out with the fuel version because this one's been out for quite some time. And if you remember in my video, I changed this over to a coping saw. This is how I leave this one all the time now. Uh, so that's ultimately why I went ahead and bought this jigsaw so I can have one set up for a jigsaw. Leave this one set up for a coping saw because I really didn't like the base on this one. It moved on me all the time. Uh, this one runs you $99 as the jigsaw itself. Whereas this new version, the fuel version, cost you $170. It is that barrel grip. Uh, so here's the size comparison between the two. It's really not drastically different in size. Uh, matter of fact, it's a little bit longer, uh, which might make the tool be a little bit more balanced. And the head maybe is a little bit slimmer up here. But it's not a drastic difference holding this one in your hand versus holding this one in your hand i'll go ahead and put the specs uh for this one up here now uh, so you can see all those all the you know strokes per minute all those things this one basically goes up to 3000 it's got variable speeds instead of a trigger whereas this one has a variable speed trigger and goes from zero to 2800 uh, but this one has a smaller short uh, stroke length and things like that. I'll put the settings for this one up here too so that you can kind of compare the two and see which one might work best for you. I can already tell you now and I'll go ahead and show you here. Head to head cutting wise it's not even close. The fuel M12 jigsaw cuts through stuff way faster uh, than the old style and this one still cuts fine with this on here. It's just a matter of I can't keep it necessarily straight as well with the coping foot if I'm going to make a straight cut uh, but as far as that doesn't change the cutting speed on it or anything like that uh, this one just flew through there so speed wise this one for sure is going to always win compared to that one features wise it's also for sure going to win because this basically has a trigger that is kind of variable speed based upon how you hold down the trigger and other than that that's really about the only feature on that other than the regular uh shoe that you have on that does have the bevel feature uh, so this one has all kinds of things it does have uh, this removable plastic plate here uh, which also has some blade storage uh, maybe i can get you can see kind of like the outline of the blade there so you can hold a couple blades in there and then you can just slide that back on uh, as far as to keep your workpiece protected with that accessories wise it does come with the splinter guard as you can see here uh, this just easily slides in and out of there so you can decide whether or not you want to have that on not have that on you know sometimes it's nice to have it on there and then sometimes it kind of blocks things and gets in your way also comes with a dust collection shield which snaps on like this and then on top of that it also gives you an attachment for dust collection again that's something that you didn't have on the old style this tube right here just slides up into here like this and I'll show you that uh, here now. You can see I've got the dust shield on. Also got the vacuum hooked up. And now I'll cut this board uh, with the vacuum on. And you can see it didn't really do a very good job until basically the sawdust, until my I caught up with the sawdust basically. And then once that sawdust kind of gets into this area or here, that's all that suction kind of mostly flows through here. So it's okay it's not great i mean i guess again it's as with i always say with most dust collection most tools it's not really all that great on but i guess some is always going to be better than nothing if that's the case that you need dust collection uh, so it does have all those accessories again you got the the splinter guard the dust shield the dust extraction uh, connection all those if you want to use those things are available to do that it does just take your you know standard t-shank type uh, jigsaw blades here you pull this lever that kind of releases or opens that up and then you slide your blade up inside of there release that and now you're good to go uh, very easy to change the blades in and out at it's pretty much the same feature as what you had on the old style if you have that one uh, a couple of the newer things that this one has it does have orbital actions settings such as zero through four you know zero would be if you want to have kind of the smoothest cut 
fourth would be most aggressive uh, so it gives you some options so if you're cutting different materials i think the book says you know basically for smooth cut zero plastic zero to two aluminum and metal zero to one and then wood is zero to four just however you want to use it depending upon what kind of work you're doing uh, so that's an easy change of that orbital action right there zero through four over on this side you have a dust blowing feature where you can blow the dust out or you can turn that off if you don't want that on there. And so here it is with the dust feature turned off. Uh, you can see as I make the cut, the dust just stays right there in place. So if you're trying to see a line or something, that's going to be hard to see. Versus now if I turn the dust feature on and then I make a cut, uh, you can see it does a good job at blowing that dust away. So I think that that's a pretty nice feature. That's something I always had to sit there and do with that is use my mouth as that dust blowing feature. Sit there and blow on that dust as I'm making the cut so I can continue to see my line. So I really like that. That's probably one of my favorite features on this compared to that. Uh, it also has a light that you can turn on and off here uh, to light up your workspace. I don't know that you'll be able to kind of see that here in my daylight, but it does an okay job. It definitely lights up your line if you're working in a dark area. Uh, it doesn't just uh, come on, I don't think, when you turn it on. You do have to turn it on and off uh, versus the old style. It just came on every time you pulled the trigger. So it is something you kind of have to think of, but it may save you some battery life. It just gives you the option to turn it on and off. Uh, so that's that feature. And then you have the speeds. Uh, it's A through 5. So this one, here's the thing I'm not too sure I like about this because it's kind of my first jigsaw without a trigger that I've ever used. You know, I like the fact that I can just let go of this and it turns off and then I can kind of also ease into something, slow it down by hand if I want to. Uh, this one just has a speed selection and an on and off button. So basically, it's either on or it's off. It's got different speeds here, A through five. A is automatic, and what that does is it starts out at the 1500 RPMs and then rises to 3000 as you're making your cut. Uh, so it starts out slow it's, and then works its way up. You get into speed one. I'm gonna turn this on and I'll kind of just turn that dial through it. Hopefully you'll be able to still hear me. Speed one is 800. Speed two, 1200. Speed three, 1800. Four is 2500. And then speed five is that full 3000. So again, it is variable speed, but it's not variable speed with a trigger. It's variable speed with the on and off button. That is going to take me some time to get used to. I'm not real sure that I like it uh, compared to a trigger. Uh, in a way, I kind of feel like I would rather have a trigger on it, but I've also never had a barrel grip jigsaw. I don't know if that's the the normal standard. Of course, this to me isn't far from being a barrel grip, but I don't know if that's the normal standard on a barrel grip jigsaw is just to have an on off button and then you select a speed. I don't know that I really like that because, you know, my, I'm going to tend to want to get away my get my thumb away from that while I'm running it and then if I want to stop it abruptly it's not a matter of just letting go of a trigger I'm going to have to actually move my thumb up and switch that from on to off to get it to turn off I could see that kind of being a problem if you're on a very um, specific cut that you just need to be careful with you basically have no way to turn it on and off with just letting go of a trigger so uh, I'm not sure I like that. Let me know in the comments below what you think about that. That's probably my least favorite thing on this. And then the last thing, the last kind of feature on it that you're going to see is that it does have bevel adjustment, 0 to 45, both directions. So you can, you know, tilt your shoe one way or the other. Uh, I do like that feature. Uh, this one also had it on its original thing. And that is the thing that failed to me because it was a toolless change. And... It would always work itself loose and you'd just be using it next thing you know your shoe would just turn on you and you'd start cutting at an angle uh, so this one actually provides you with an onboard tool that you can use to do this and you just basically have a bolt up in here that you take this allen screw you take it on there and then you slide it uh, back like forward like that and you can see those little engagement points right there 
you put it on whatever angle you want it on, pull it back, and then hand tighten that with your Allen head. Again, it, the idea would probably be you're going to think I'd rather have it toolless on this, and I would too. If I could have the preference, I'd want it to be toolless if it worked. But I would rather have this right here for the few times that I'm going to change that to a bevel to use this tool, especially since they allow you to have it on the tool, than to have the problems that I had with that one there. So I guess they're addressing the problem that they knew that they had with the original M12, and they just decided the best thing that we can possibly do is just make it so that somebody can just absolutely, you know, lock it down and not have to worry about it working loose on them with the vibrations of a jigsaw. So, so yeah, guys, that is the M12 Fuel Jigsaw 2545-20, $170 versus $99 for the original. I think for a jigsaw, other than I'm not sure about this whole trigger thing, but as far as performance of a jigsaw, if you're going to use it like a jigsaw, this is the way you want to go over the $99 option. I really like it for a coping saw. I didn't really care for this as a jigsaw. It, it's not real super powerful to cut through many things other than thinner stuff. I think this one's going to be much better. The only thing I'm worried about is this whole trigger situation. We'll just have to see. Time will tell on that how much I can adjust to that. Uh, but I really do like it. Uh, now, the one thing is it's 170 I think the M18 is 199 for their barrel grip. So, you know, $30 more. Is it much better? I don't know because I don't have it. Uh, anybody that has that can drop comments below what you think about that. But I still prefer M12 tools if they perform well. Most of their fuel ones do just because even if it's a little bit smaller, it's still going to be more maneuverable in certain situations. It's lighter to deal with. I mean, most of the time I'm not cutting crazy stuff with my jigsaw that I'm going to need just super power, but I need enough power to go through things to where it doesn't tear out wood and things like that, but I don't need something that's going to cut through a 4x4 post uh, in a jigsaw. But I hope that this is useful. This is kind of the features, my first impression of it. I showed you a few things on it, showed you it cutting. Again, time will tell uh, what I think about it. It's a brand new tool, so I don't have a whole lot of time to put it to use before I'm getting this video out there, but... Maybe it just lets you know it's out there. i let you see the features of it. Maybe that helps you make the decision if this is the right tool for you. That's ultimately the idea behind this. I'm not pushing it on you. Just letting you know it's out there and letting you know what it does. And that way you can decide if it's something that you need. But hope it was useful. You guys stay safe. Have a blessed day. See you on the next video.